Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. Let's uh, bring in one of the really great guys out there, uh, Passionate Cares, and that's Bob Lombardi from the PIAA. Bob, how you been? Good, Steve. How about you? Doing great. How's the golf game, by the way? <clears throat> Um, when I'm with Ken Miller, it's really good, but you can't play with Ken Miller. He's in another another, another world. <laughs> uh, well, Kenny's just. I, in fact, I saw Kenny ten days ago. We were talking about you. Uh, he lo- he loves your game, by the way. So I'm the same way. I'll, I'll get out there with Greg Nye, the golf coach, and Greg will say, "We'll try this and try this." And like when the round's over, I feel a lot better. But then the next time I go out and I don't have them, <laughs> it kills me. <laughs> Name, image, and likeness. You've had to. You have, and the PIAA have had to navigate a lot of different issues over the years. What's been the biggest challenge with this, especially based on Pennsylvania law? Well, our law right now speaks only to uh, collegiate athletes. So that that has helped, and it's also been maybe a potential problem. But we want to get in front of it because there's a lot of trickle-down effect, and we've been watching very closely our brother and sister state associations. And right now I believe there's 12 of them that have adopted an NIL policy, and there's another 10 on, on the drawing board. So the, the tough part about this, Steve, is the misinformation. Some people like to use catchphrases, and this has been thrown out there as pay for play, which it's not, and that has really caused some issues for us here. Yeah, and that that's what's interesting about is pay for play. And every state has different has a different uh, law or the interpretation. Quinn Ewers, who is now at the University of Texas, has always been really the poster child of what I'm about to talk about because he was as a high schooler, he would not be allowed to get any name image and likeness deals in Texas. So he reclassified and went to Ohio State for four months, five months, and then finally transferred to Texas as a collegian. Uh, so that's – is there uh, – when how often do you and state associations talk to each other about what the respective laws are in each state to get a better gauge? Well, we're fortunate. We're – there's eight states in our section. We're section two of the NFHS out of the 51 state associations. And our brother and sisters are Delaware, D.C., Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, and ourselves in Maryland. And right now, um, they're all talking about them. Our, our friends to New Jersey have a policy. Our friends to the north in New York has a policy. Ohio defeated theirs, but the reason they defeated theirs from the information we have is because they put the onus on the school. Some schools thought they had approved this, and nobody wants to get involved in that. So our section talks weekly, and we have been shared with them where we are with this, and it is really the the middle-of-the-road type language, Steve. And the other part of it is, we wanted to get in front of it because we don't want to see a student that's a senior get caught in uh, the net, so to speak, that uh, people are out there fishing for sharks and they catch dolphins. That's not a good thing. So we right. want to work with a group and provide education to moms and dads to know what they can be doing and what they can't. And paying students to play is not one of them. Right. Uh, is there any talk, Bob, in the Pennsylvania legislative system of expanding this 
so that high schoolers could be a part of a name, image, and likeness and not be pay for play, but expanding the definition of what they have in the state? I'm not aware of that, Steve, at this time. I'm sure there's conversation. But I think with that, with the eye on that a little bit, we would like to develop our own language that our member schools would like, that they're comfortable with, instead of having a top-down approach that you have to accept what is given to you. How would you feel about federal legislation where where there would be a sense of unified law? Well, you know what? If everybody's singing from that same hymnal, I think that would be all right. But the NCAA has walked away from that and sort of dumped, you know, you talk to Dan over there in the football ops office or Matt yep. in the pit football ops office, they're going to tell you at the collegiate level it's like the wild, wild west. Well, heck, we don't want that to happen. We want to get in front of this and provide a proactive approach to mom and dad and guardians and family so they can make educated decisions and not get caught up in something as simple as tax implications or financial implications that students at 18 years of age aren't ready for. Exactly. Believe me, their their adults of 28 years of age aren't ready for it either. (laughs) (laughs) We we could go higher than that, brother. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. We could go higher in a number than that in terms of the age. No question. Uh, So if you had a chance based on talking to other associations to craft an idea and send the PIAA in a direction. What the... I'm sorry, I lost you there for a sec. If you, you've talked to enough associations within the states. Yep. Uh, what direction do you idealistically, if you had a chance to sit down with the legislature, and you've had your chances, obviously. But to talk about this issue, what would be a couple of ideas that they would need to consider legislatively that could make a difference? Well, I think the language that we've come up with to not have school-employed or affiliated people with booster clubs or coaches, administrators, alumni, they cannot solicit, arrange, or negotiate or pay for a student's use of their NIL or even give consideration to the student for a use of their NIL and not use school name, nicknames, uniform, any school identifying apparel or involved with PIAA or their member school in it. That would be a really good start. And that's the language we have that we've sort of taken from California, New Jersey, and New York. It's real simple. It's the middle of the road, and we think that would be a great foundation to start with this. Right, let's look at the past year. We've, we've been slowly but surely working our way out of the pandemic. Some would say we're in an endemic stage. You staged championships this year with, with fans. How did you feel it went? I thought it went great. Moms and dads were uh coming back in communities. I, I believe our crowds were better than they had been. Um, I think um, electronic ticketing so people can have an ease of buying the ticket rate at home or from their phone or computer helped. It helped them easily get that so they don't have to go to the school and buy one and have the exchange of paper money and those type of things. So. I think I would say looking back on this school year, especially what we came out of a year ago, uh, was a very, very uh, satisfying year, even though there were a number of challenges. What did you learn out of, out of the challenges of the pandemic that you're applying now because it was a learning experience? Number one, nothing's cast in stone. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> it can change, yes. <laughs> change in a heartbeat. And you yes. better be able to uh, adapt and adjust and uh, restructure or whatever you think 
uh, is in the best interest of those involved because we've had to do that for two years, really. And um, this past year was a lot better than the previous. But of course, the previous year, as you know, we had restrictions on uh, spectators and numbers and indoor facilities and the wearing of masks and all. It certainly was a challenge for everybody involved. But, you know, like anything else, Steve, and you've seen this better than anybody, when, when challenges present themselves, people that are uh, doing things for the right reason bond together and put, the, put their uh, eye on the target and go get it together. No question. No question. What does it tell us about the popularity and the strength high school athletics that when you have a bidding process for championships that you're getting a f- some fair competition out there to get it. What does that tell you about what the organization well, what the I high schools have done? It's important. Athletics are a very important piece in every local community. And in some places, it's a, a major identifier for that community. And because of that, there's a lot of passion and emotion with it that sometimes is really, really good. And sometimes, you know, we get off kilter a little bit. And I guess that's, that's the reason that we've had certain policies and procedures since 1913 to take a look at those so we don't get off kilter. So when everybody does what they're supposed to do, it works. But I'll go back to one thing. Athletics are supposed to be fun. And sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes we lose that focus for a lot of reasons, and whether it be advancement or uh, recognition or winning and losing and the, the, the things that come with it that way. But athletics are supposed to be fun, and I think the people that we have involved with it are fun, and they, they keep that priority right there. So true. I mean, that's so true, especially at the high school level. It's supposed to be fun. Uh, Where are you right now with charter schools, um, non-public schools versus public schools? Do you like how it's been working integrated the way it has been, or is it something that you need to continue to revisit? Oh, I I think it's it's an issue that's never going to go away because I think there's folks out there that think people are playing loose and fast. Uh, We haven't found that. Um, Our competition formula that we put in four years ago, started six years ago, uh, discussion with it, uh, has worked. Our postseason sit-out and our transfer rule has been a major assistance in having people stop the breaks of transfers just to transfer or athletically motivated transfers and has helped, I think, level the playing field. Right now, we're taking a look at our formula to see if we should even get away from the transfer piece because we're finding that uh, a lot of the public schools as well as the private schools are having transfers. And the number of transfers at the private schools are probably less than they are at the public. So we're going to look at that competition formula based on success because there is an outcry on some schools that um, keep winning and they say they're not taking transfers. They haven't been proved they're taking transfers, but because they continue to win, people think that they're upsetting competitive balance. So we got to take a look at that. Gone from four to six classifications. Uh, how do you feel that's worked? Outstanding. Because the people, uh, the schools that are, are playing except possibly in the highest class are playing light-sized schools of their own. And that uh, expansion has really equated and and, uh, even the playing playing field from a competitive balance situation. We talked about name, image, and likeness. That obviously is a challenge. What's another challenge you, you, that you know you've got to be – you've always got to be thinking about the next thing around the block. After name, image, and likeness, is there something else maybe under the radar that you need to, to make sure you're ahead of the game on? Well, I think uh, the, the change – and this is a little bit down the road, Steve, but I think the way that uh, consumers take 
uh, events, whether it be television or we web streaming or audio streaming and those types of things. But that landscape is quickly changing, as you've seen. And the way that people sometimes uh, get some of our, uh, our contests are changing rapidly. And I think we're down the road here, as you know, in wrestling, we uh, have a, quite a relationship with Flow Wrestling that has worked yes. very well because every individual that's involved with wrestling has seen, you can see every bout from team through individuals, including the championships. And last year they produced something like 4.6 million minutes oh. <laughs> of, oh. of, of, of time for uh, – uh, of wrestling just in our state alone. So that says to me people are tuning in and watching. So I, I think that's something down the road that we have to take a good look at. Always good to talk with the man in the arena, and that's you. <laughs> but, well, you're kind. I mean, you're kind. Uh, no, you know what? When you're hey, the man this, in the arena, the, from thirty thousand feet, there are a lot of people that want to, you know. Oh well, <laughs> right. And then if once you're in the arena, you understand what you're dealing with. So that's why we talk with you. Well, you're kind, but I, I will tell you, it is different sitting here. Than, I mean, I, I go to the grocery <laughs> store and they have all the answers for me, but that's okay. But I like to uh, look forward to seeing you and pay you an invite. You know our spring festival is off the ground and i'd like to thank the penn state uh, athletic Associ or, uh, department along with the uh, happy valley convention visitors bureau to doing everything they possibly could to get our spring festival started next spring and we're going to be baseball and softball two days back to back and then we're going to follow it up with boys volleyball and boys and girls lacrosse on saturday so we're yep. really excited about that, Steve. We think we got the right place with the right facilities, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. And I think that it's going to work out great because there, there could be a potential crossover for fans, and to have everything at once, it's going to be a great draw for a lot of people. Well done. Uh, I was excited when I heard about the idea. It's great. Well, thank you. And your support, I know, was behind the scenes. But we can't thank you enough, and we'll look forward to seeing you at some of those events. And uh, maybe even uh, have a, a, a cold soda. <laughs> Indeed. Or maybe some other beverages. All right. So, <laughs> water. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah, of course. Bob. I'm a Gatorade type of guy. <laughs> Gatorade guy. Bob, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much for your time and for all the hard work that you and the uh, entire PAAA happens to do. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Steve. Always good to talk to you.